So in this episode, I really want to address the question of how does one begin or where does one begin when they want to get started in guitar making, they want to become a luthier. Now, first of all, it makes sense to get really clear with your intentions. So do you want to do this as a hobby, as most people asking themselves this question? Likely that's where they're coming from. Or are you looking at it as a job or a career, um, whether that be just a part-time uh, way to pull in some extra money or full-time, really diving deep into it. That's going to change, I would think, how you go about getting started. Also, are you interested in building acoustic guitars, electric guitars, both? Are you interested in building mandolins, lutes, um, violins, all other sorts of crazy stringed instruments? That's going to be something that you should really be clear on from the outset as well. Well, not entirely clear because this should be a process that evolves as as you get into it. So you, you might start out with a certain intention and then as um, you go along developing skills, you might find that you are interested in building bass guitars, for example. And then also, do you want to be more of a guitar builder, a true maker of instruments, or are you uh, very interested in the side of luthery that is repair and modification of instruments that are made by somebody else. In fact, if you're looking at it from the money-making career route, that really is the best way to, to get started in a way that's going to lead to a decent income down the road. For most luthiers, by far their bread and butter is repair work. So if you can narrow your focus down to just a few areas of interest within luthery, that I think is very important. You don't want to be too broad with it and want to do everything because you're never going to develop the skills um, to do all of those things well. So in, in my experience, I mean, I'm extremely specialized. I just build flat top acoustic guitars like the one you see here. I don't build electric guitars or mandolins or ukuleles or anything like that. That's not to say that you can't learn a lot from building other types and styles of instruments, but it's hard to really develop a unique style and instrument if you're not specialized in some way. But anyway, most of you watching this video are probably interested in this from the perspective of starting out as a hobbyist, um, maybe a little bit of uh, thought of making some part-time income from it, but mostly you just want to build instruments that you can keep in your family and cherish and pass down to somebody else or, you know, just something unique that you can play and show off to your friends. And there are lots of ways to get started. You can take a course. You can uh, watch a bunch of YouTube videos like you are right now and be an autodidact and learn that way. You can apprentice with someone which, you know, that's more of something I would recommend for the career path if you're really serious about it. Um, you can buy a bunch of books and DVDs and learn that way. All of these ways are, are valid ways of learning. One is not necessarily better than the other. It all depends on what your intentions are and really what type of person you are um, as far as the way that you feel most comfortable taking in information. But before you start purchasing uh, tools and getting some books and signing up for a course or anything like that, I think it's a good idea to also consider your whether or not you have basic tool skills. So it, for example, if you're trying to do this from YouTube videos or something like that, it's going to be a lot harder to do it in an unsupervised way if you don't have a basic understanding of hand tools, which you use a lot of in acoustic guitar building, and a basic understanding of some of the most common power tools, like uh, the router, especially because routers can be very dangerous. Now your expectations for your first instrument, um, whether you do it through YouTube videos, or even if you take an online course like my online course, your expectations should be that you're going to screw certain things up. 
in fact, that you're going to screw a lot of things up. Um, at least from the perspective of further down the road when you get five or six guitars under your belt and you look back at that first one, you're going to really be able to tell the difference. And um, those mistakes that you made early on are really going to jump out at you. I did a video recently uh, where I looked at my fourth guitar, the fourth guitar I ever built, and I critically analyzed it and picked it apart, and it is just horrible, compared, especially compared to what I'm making now, but I mean, honestly, I think it's pretty horrible by any standards. So if you're expecting just perfect out of the gates, perfection, you're going to be disappointed. You're going to make mistakes. And so what you want to do is learn from those mistakes and continue to iterate one after the other, create new guitars, don't batch out uh, 10 or 20 guitars all at once of the same model or type when you're just getting started. It might be tempting to do that to save time batching out those guitars, but what you're going to end up with is um, 10 guitars that all have the same set of mistakes on them because you just haven't reached a point yet where you're creating something where the mistakes are small enough that they're just not noticed. There's always mistakes, but as you go along, those mistakes get smaller and smaller to the point where to a critical eye or to a, a critical player, a discerning player, they're just not going to notice those hyper, uber geeky mistakes that say another luthier looking at your guitar, picking it up, moving it around is going to be like, oh, hey, this, uh, you know, these miters are pretty bad. So what you want to do is look at it as a one guitar at a time iterative process. Build an instrument, then try and build that same instrument or a similar instrument, but better. So learn, take notes. It's always a good idea. Have a notepad with you during your build. And when you screw something up, write it down and then come up with a solution maybe a, a new tool you need to buy, maybe you used uh, the improper tool for the job, come up with some solution for making it better the next time. Another way to get into guitar building is by starting out with just repairs and modifications. So actually put guitar building itself on the shelf for now and just focus on fret work, uh, doing setups. And what's nice about this is it's a lot cheaper uh, you can develop s critical skills, crucial skills, not by investing in a bunch of tools and wood, but by simply taking in the guitars of friends and giving it a, a nice setup, doing some fret work, something like that. Start out by doing it for free because you're going to be bad at it. And then eventually, um, even just after a, a couple iterations of that, you can start charging for it. That's a great way to kind of dip your toes into the water, develop some skills before you set off on full-on guitar building. And you may even find in the process that you really like doing repairs and modifications, and that just might be where your interest is at. Now, another way to sort of dip your toes into the water is with kit building. So that's building a guitar from a prefabricated kit. This is a very popular option. Uh, the one thing I want to say is for the very serious builders, when you're building with a kit, you are not building, you're not learning to build a gu guitar the correct way. You might think that guitar makers, even factory operations, but also solo makers, you might think that they essentially, when they're building a guitar from scratch, that they build all the kit parts and then assemble it together. And it's reasonable to think that, but it actually doesn't work that way. The best guitars are made by integrating the parts into the process, not after the parts are fully fleshed out, but integrating them into the process partway through the building of those parts, if that makes sense. I'm not sure if I'm saying that in a great way. What I mean is, for example, in a kit, they pre-radius the fretboard for you. And this is a bit of a problem because the best way to build a guitar is not to glue the fretboard down after it's been 
fully dimensioned and radiused and sometimes it even has the frets already on it. The problem there is when, when you glue the fret board down, there's a certain amount of leveling and radiusing and dimensioning that is appropriate to do after the fretboard is glued down. And since in the kit, the fretboard is already at essentially its final dimensions, you don't have that leeway to sand and shape the fretboard any further. So what you're left with is a less than flat level board. So it's not to say that you can't learn from a kit. I actually think a great way to get started is to first build a kit and then after that build, um, integrate new skills. Essentially then get a kit with the sides unbent so you can learn side bending, for example. And after that then get a slightly less kitted, more from scratch setup, maybe the next time you dive into neck carving, whereas before you were getting kits with prefabricated necks. That's a great way to kind of incrementally improve your skills so you're not throwing everything onto your plate all at once. However, just be aware, again, for the very serious builder who wants to really perfect the craft over the long term, if you spend too much time just building kits, um, you eventually have to essentially unlearn some of those skills because it's just not the ideal way of building a guitar. Not to mention you'll have developed certain uh, tool setups, jigs, and processes around that kit, and you're going to have to basically um, develop new jigs and tool setups to deal with from scratch building when you get to that point. Another reason to eventually move away from kit guitars or even start out not using kit guitars is because you can never really develop your own unique style with a kit because you're building uh, prefabricated parts that are set up to be, you know, a Martin, Dreadnought, OM, etc. So those guitars are always going to look, feel, play, and sound like a Martin Dreadnought, OM, etc. So it's just something to think about. And here's another thing, as far as tooling, don't buy all your tools at once. You don't need to just go nuts and outfit your shop right off the bat. Uh, I would recommend you get the parts and materials you need for your first build, and then just start picking up tools as you go. So just get started. For example, if you're starting on um, jointing the plates, then make yourself a shooting board, get yourself a jack plane, and just learn that process of taking your book match and gluing it together. Then when you get to the next step, say you're bending the sides, then you can tool up for that operation. It just, there's, there's so many tools and jigs and things required for guitar building that if you go nuts and outfit yourself from the start, there are going to be some things that once you get to that step, you'll find that it's just not what you thought it was. It's not the right tool for the job. So honestly, just get started on that first step. And in the video description, I'll include links to my favorite books for uh, new luthiers and some links to other resources, including my own course, which you don't have to take my word for. If you look up reviews for it, it's very highly reviewed and there's been almost 200 people in the course now. That's the online course. And then I also teach a hands-on eight-day workshop once a month here in Burnville, Pennsylvania. I'll include some links in the description. Oh, and one more thing. I'll just throw this in at the end of the video. Learn how to sharpen your tools if you're not already an experienced woodworker who knows how to do that. So I would just commit um, one evening out of the week, every week, until you get competent at it, to sitting down and sharpening with whatever sharpening system you end up using and just practicing and getting better at it until you reach this point where you essentially plateau and they're workably sharp. They don't have to be, you know, this competition level scary sharp. Some people get um, unreasonable about it, but they should be very, very, very sharp. Most 
beginners, I find, are working with super blunt instruments, which is just an obvious recipe for, um, well, potential injuries, but also just poor craftsmanship. So decide what that first step is for your guitar build, get started on that, and develop some sharpening skills in the process. I think that's a great way to get going in Luthery. And that's all I got. Bye. If you learned something here, please give this video a like and subscribe so you can be notified when I release a new DIY guitar making video every Friday. And if you want to really learn more, take one of my structured online courses at ericschaferguitars.com or register for a hands-on guitar building workshop here with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania.